first time Billy Taylor's Cardinals met Rob Murphy's Eagles this season, it was a game filled with physical play, heated exchanges, and a narrow win for the Cardinals. Expect to see a few more bruises surface today. Eastern Michigan, Ball State, round two. an arena on the campus of Ball State University. It's the Ball State Cardinals hosting the Eagles of Eastern Michigan in Mid-American Conference men's basketball. Good afternoon and welcome along with Jerry Pearson. I'm Vince Welch. Jerry, you've talked many times this season about the fact you've got to win your home games, especially in conference play. Ball State hasn't done that. The Cardinals one and four at home in the MAC, And it's not too early to be thinking about the Mid-American Conference Tournament. The top five teams get first round buys. Today, Ball State in Eastern Michigan battling for that fifth spot. Vince, the benefit for winning these home games is absolutely tremendous. It can't get any greater than it is today. Ball State cannot afford to lose this game or any home games. If they do, then they're going to risk not being able to have a, uh, you know, a buy or possibly going on the road, Vince. It's that big, and I'm sure the coaches are very excited about what could happen today. We see that uh, it is the second meeting between these two teams this season. They met in the conference opener. That game was played in Ypsilanti, and it was a Ball State victory, but it was hard fought. Eastern is one of those teams that they will get after you defensively, pressure the three-pointers, like to get a uh, basket off turnover, as you saw there from Glenn Bryant. But Ball State's interior passing on that night was outstanding, and the Cardinals withstood some occasional hot shooting from Eastern Michigan, but it was one of the better performances from Ball State this season. The Cardinals really did a nice job on the defensive end and uh, Chris Bond who you see getting the basket here knocked down a couple of free throws with less than a second to go and Ball State won that game in Ypsilanti but you got to believe that Glenn Bryant and the Eagles want to offer a payback today. He's one of their leading scorers. He's a great athlete. He's a shot blocker. He's a power type of player. Could really run the floor. Does a lot of big things for the Eagles uh, on both sides of the ball so they'll look to him quite often today. Chris Bond on the other hand probably the best defensive player single handedly uh, in the MAC. He had a great game, as you mentioned, Vance, 18 points and eight out of eight field goal percentage up there. Just, just terrific. He's going to have to have another big game again today. The Cardinals have won two in a row. Eastern Michigan has lost two straight. We're going to be the keys for the Eagles to break that losing streak today. Their defense has been outstanding, so they have to sustain that good defense today in the 2-3 zone that they like to play. Plus, their scoring balance is going to be important. They've had some other guys step up, but they, they've been very inconsistent. they got to play consistently good here today in Worthen Arena. And on the other side of the uh, of the ball, Ball State has to build on these last two games. They've had success. They played really well, and they have to limit turnovers. That's been a real key to them, I think, for their success recently. That's got to be a key for them today. A lot of strings attached to this one. It is a big game in the Mid-American Conference. Ball State and Eastern Michigan from Worthen Arena and Muncie next. Back at Worthen Arena in Muncie, getting ready to tip off between Ball State and Eastern Michigan in the Mid-American Conference. Quick look at the starters, including Deshante Riley, wears number one for Eastern Michigan, the leading rebounder on the team, J.R. Sims, a former standout from Fort Wayne Snyder. Fans may remember him taking his team to the high school state championship. And uh, Glenn Bryant, we talked about Bryant in the open for Ball State. Note 14, Chase Brogna getting his first start, the freshman from Houston, Texas, as Ball State plays once again without Jesse Berry and Tyler Cook. Berry out with concussion-like symptoms and Cook with a hip injury. And there's Rob Murphy, the Mid-American Conference Coach of the Year from last season. His second year at Eastern Michigan. Of course, the headband for the Ball State Cardinals is Billy Taylor in his sixth season at the helm of the Cardinals program. Vince, this game here, uh, you know, Eastern won the thing last year, won the West last year. So with Toledo being out, they feel like that this is a big game for them too. So they want to win and possibly repeat what they did last year. So very big for both these coaches. Majuk will jump it up against Riley, and Eastern Michigan will have the first possession of the basketball game. Ball State has won two in a row. Eastern Michigan has lost two straight. Eastern 0 and 10 on the road this season. Good defense there, half court by Ball State. Got uh, Eastern to take an off balance shot right away. Eastern will play zone. Ball State man to man on the defensive end. 
Very aggressive from the Eagles in this initial possession. They're working, they want to work the paint area. They had great success against us. They're going to look to get it inside to Mazuk. Good screen. Shot clock winding down as Scaife misses the jump shot and the rebound pulled down by Glenn Bryant and Eastern Michigan back to the offensive end. Good move by Sims, fed it off and had it knocked away, so it's another turnover. Ball State really did does need to run and get down ahead of this 2-3 zone, try to get some easy baskets today. Fields finds Bond underneath. Brogna looked at the jump shot. Trapped on the baseline, but a nice pass, and Bond finishes the first basket of the game. Excellent baseline pass there along uh, by uh, Chase Brogna. Did a good job. Wasn't sure he was going to get out of that trap well, but he did. Easy basket for Ball State. As noted, Brogna with his first start. Freshman here at Ball State. A bit of pressure coming in and getting that first start. Always nice to make a play in the early going. They're going to calm the nerves a little bit as Majuk pulls yep. down a rebound. Juwan Scaife has been red hot lately. Really giving the Ball State Cardinals a shot in the arm offensively. Had a career high 30 in that win over Western Michigan last week, then 23 on Wednesday against Northern Illinois. Brogna has the shot blocked, and it's going to be a fast break for Eastern Michigan. Bryant missed it, rebound pulled down, and a foul called on Ball State. Well, uh, Ball State, Vince, did not do a good job of running down there expecting the, the shot to possibly miss. They kind of loped. You see only one, one guy back right here, and it put a lot of pressure on Brogdon to try to rebound in the, in the tall timber there, and uh, Easter was able to get the ball back and get the foul. Brogdon called for the foul, and at the free throw line is Anthony Strickland. Redshirt junior out of Ypsilanti. Both coaches will go to the bench liberally, and uh, Kamenicki and Marcus Posley come in for the Cardinals. Vince, what was uh, interesting in the last game, Ball State bench was outscored 28 to 2 in that game because uh, Eastern does play an awful lot of players, haven't subbed yet, but uh, they got to match that kind of point production from the benches. Well, Eastern's leading scorer is a player who comes off the bench, yep. and that's Derek Thompson. Averages 10.7 a game. Chris Bond, 8 of 8 from the floor in the first meeting between these two. Escape has the shot blocked by Bryant. Well, Bryant's gotten out and deflected a couple of them already. Yep, real long arms. Good timing on his jumping. He should be very deliberate offensively, looking to get uh, something down inside or dribble weave. Strickland charge. Well, you can count on Kamenecki uh, being able to take that charge. Good job there. He was well positioned, did a good job on, on uh, defensively that time. See it right there, good position. And uh, Boy, when that happened, Strickland didn't have control of his dribble. Kamenicki makes so many of those plays. He does. does all the things that don't show up in the box score, and he's made a living at that. He earns himself playing time in that regard, and we're going the other direction. And it's against Kamenicki this time. The illegal screen, I think, is what uh, the officials explained to Matt. Just didn't get set. Played about three and a half minutes here at Worthen Arena. Ball State and Eastern Michigan. Cardinals trying to extend a winning streak and Eastern trying to snap a losing streak as the Eagles turn it over for the third time. Yeah, Eastern trying to take advantage of uh, their big size down inside there and uh, didn't work too well. Good pressure on the ball by the Cardinal half court defense. Great shot there. Rob Murphy on the sideline looked like he'd seen enough already. <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> Coaches with that look. You've had it on your face oh, yeah. a time or two. Oh, yeah. What in the world is going on? I'll tell you what, Eastern really getting out hard after the 
after the shooter. As soon as they catch it, there hasn't been any opening on the perimeter at all. Brian almost stole it. Shot clock at five. Bond underneath. Another great pass there by Posley. Almost lost the ball. Found Bond underneath, and that's where Ball State had success, Vince, the first time they played down along the baseline there, scored an awful lot of points down in the painted area. Into this the lane. thing, Jerry, when they extend that defensive pressure, it also takes further more defenders away from the basket, and that opens up some things. Yes, it does. Kamenicki with the steal. Ball State taking advantage of another turnover. Great there, great energy by Kamenecki that time. He stepped out in the passing lane, played a little ball you man. Excellent job there and took it coast to coast. Four early turnovers for Eastern Michigan and the Cardinals with an early advantage. Almost another travel and it's lost. Majuk comes up with it. Two on one for the Cardinals. Scaife and one. Vince that was all set up there by Posley. He did a great job of spreading the floor. Did a good job of bounce pass it to uh, Scaife at the right time. Five early Eastern turnovers in the Ball State Cardinals with a hot start in Muncie. Real good defense here by the Ball State Cardinals on the Eastern Michigan uh, Eagles. Good fast break here. Watch the passing here. Marcus Posley passes just at the right time for Scape to take it up and get the end one. Scape going to the line to shoot uh, shoot the free throw to get the three point play as Ball State Vince has jumped out eight to one the first five minutes of play so far. Cardinals really taking advantage of some careless ball handling by Eastern Michigan. The defense turned to offense there yep. as Majuk came up with the steal, got it out quickly to Posley to get that break started. And now Juwan Scaife at the free throw line. Ball State with an eight point lead. Posley putting a little uh, full court pressure here to kind of be a little bothersome for the Half court defense. Inside shot from Derek Thompson off the mark. Majuk rebounds. Thompson into the ball game for the first time. Mentioned earlier, he's the leading scorer on this team. Comes in off the bench, averages just under 11 a game. Posley's done a nice job. Another freshman who's come in, and especially in the absence of Jesse Berry, who's missing his third straight game. Bond to Majuk. Some contact there, no call, and Eastern Michigan has the basketball with Austin Harper pushing it. The body's all over the place. Escape is fouled this time. Thompson's going to be called for it. Well, Vince, we talked about how rugged that game was up at uh, Ypsilanti a month ago, and it's starting out that same way here. A lot of body contact and so forth. Uh, these teams don't particularly like each other. There's no question about that. But uh, a lot of physical play right now by both teams. Thompson called for the foul. That's his first third on Eastern Michigan. Well, Ball State doing a good job still finding Bond down there low. He's just kind of parading down there and playing behind, trying to find the opening. Posley, long three. Bryant comes down with the rebound. Good hustle from Fields. And some numbers now as Balkama gets the easy deuce. Fields was caught back here trying to save that basketball from going out of bounds. Yeah. And his man got to the other end. Right, he was hustling after it. And no one picked it up. No one saw him. First field goal for Eastern Michigan comes at about the 13-30 mark. Bond really working the baseline, finding some openings as Posley knocks down a little 12 footer. Yeah, Bond was in trouble underneath, right out directly under the basket, but he found Posley out there, did a good job of uh, finding the open teammate. Posley has shown he is not shy, getting some extended minutes the last couple of games, and he has been finding his shot as Bryant does the same in response. And you can just see the confidence of Bryant there. He just made a little reverse dribble and rose up and shot, shot the jumper very confidently. 
Posley had 13 or three of 14, I should say, from the floor against Northern Illinois. Had 10 points. Like to shoot it a little bit better than that. He was two of ten from three-point range, but he's capable of putting it in the hoop. Yep. Boy, if uh, they're not even guarding Majuk, if he had that, he could shoot that three-point jumper out there, Vince. He'd have a bunch. Hosley again. But Posley can do that again. Squared up very nicely. Good patience by the Ball State offense. Playing well, both ends of the floor. Playing with a little excitement. Got a little uh, zip in their step today, with this good start, especially. Largest lead of the game for Ball State. Thompson misses that one. It's an air ball. Good defense from Scaife out there pressuring. Yep, the good hands up. Timeout on the floor. Just under 12 minutes left here in the first half. Ball State with a great start. Cardinals lead by nine. Ball State with a nine point lead at the 12 minute timeout. Cardinals. Really done a nice job defensively, Jerry, and that's led to some offense. Yes, they really have done a nice job of that last particular basket there that uh, Scaife had his hand right up in uh, Eastern Michigan play face and, and didn't get, uh, didn't foul, so did a good job. Ball out of bounds for Ball State. So they're building, you can see uh, Vince, they're playing with a lot of confidence. They're confident against this 2 3 zone. Uh, their half court defense has been real solid. They got good hands. You can see it in their faces. A uh, little different uh, feeling than uh, we saw maybe at the beginning of the game up at Eastern. Ball State with Zach Fields on the floor along with Chris Bond, Marcus Posley, Jawan Scaife, and Bo Calhoun, the freshman from South Bend in the ball game for the first time. Where's number 12 for the Cardinals? Will not see Eastern come out of that zone for anything today. Nope, I don't believe they, they don't like to. Bond inside pass to Fields, and he tried to connect with Scaife out on the three-point line. It was knocked out of bounds. Zach Fields had one of his better games, too, up at Eastern Michigan uh, four weeks ago and had eight points and three rebounds. Just did an outstanding job of catching the ball down in there low. Got a few layups. A dangerous pass and Fields almost had it knocked away. Good hustle that time by Austin Harper. Posley finds Calhoun. It's blocked and knocked away. Eastern will have it. You know, Cal Calhoun has to catch it with a little more uh, authority and go up there strong. He just lost the handle on it. It's too bad because Boston made a nice, uh, nice pass. Bryant on the perimeter trying to get it down on the block and does as Harris handles it. Now around the outside, and Sims snuggles in the three-pointer. J.R. Sims, the redshirt freshman from Fort Wayne Snyder. Always seems to have a very good game against the Cardinals. No Indiana product. Always seems to play athletically and shoots it well. Had 10 points, or excuse me, 12 points yep. in that earlier meeting against the Cardinals. Posley long three off the mark, and Bryant pulls down the rebound. Boy, he can sky. Yes, he can. He was way up there ahead of uh, Bo, Bo Calhoun that time. Let's see Bo get a little more aggressive. Balkama cutting through, but Field steals it, and the Cardinals now come to the offensive end. Scaife. And there's a foul underneath. It's going to go against Bryant as he and Bond were battling for the rebound. Those, those two guys can have the, about the same kind of hops. You see this missed shot here by Scaife. Both these guys went after it hard, and uh, Brian did get the foul, but I think Bond can pretty well match him on jumping ability, Vince. First foul on Brian. Kamenicki and Brogna, along with Majuk, back in for the Cardinals. Posley needs some help, and it's stolen. I'm not sure who he was throwing it to. He's just trying to get it in bounds, I think. You now, both times Ball State is inbounded from down there, it's been a challenge. Majuk pulls down another rebound for the Cardinals. Third rebound already. Kicked. Cardinals will get it out of bounds. Good look there by John Skate there. He had Kamenicki down there, but hit the foot of uh, Eastern Michigan player. But good look there. Good team, good teamwork by both teams. Now, this is where Ball State has struggled the last two times trying to inbounds from this position. And it happens again, but Scaife 
able to get back and get it. Boy, very dangerous. Well, you got those long arms right there. You have to screen, do a good job of throwing the ball in. Stolen away, it's Sims. J.R. Sims with a second basket. Good defense and finish. Uh, excellent, excellent defense. Good quickness. You can you can see the athleticism. These guys are real strong. They're quick. They have long arms, and they're just as hungry as Ball State is for this win today. Shot clock under 10. Brogna looked at the three. Got to do something with it quickly. Kamenicki gets it up, and that's a shot clock violation. Vince, this is one of those games against a 2-3 zone that a guy like Barry could really, could really be effective for Ball State. Obviously, he won't play today, as we talked about, but, but he could be very important to Ball State uh, against this 2-3 zone. It's just uh, you, know, you got a couple shooters out there, but you're a little bit limited on the perimeter. Jesse Barry missing the game again today because of concussion like symptoms took a blow to the head you know, a couple of stitches around the eye and is just not recovered from that incident Bryant loses it momentarily Majuk comes up with it and the ball is kicked around and last touched by Eastern Michigan so Ball State will keep it with 836 to play here in the first half. Coach Murphy not happy at all with his players about being careless with the basketball. You just can't go on the road and be uh, careless that way and turn it over as many times as they've turned it over already. Eight. Eastern 0 and 10 on the road this season. Yep. And you know they played well against all the conference teams. It's, I think Ball State's had about as good success there's one of the better field goal percentage defensive teams in the league. And Ball State shot better than anybody against any against Eastern this year. Balkama called for that foul against Eastern Michigan. It's his first. Well, Eastern seems to know what Ball State wants to do on the inbounds each time, well scouted. Yeah, they're really moving it, really moving around in the 2-3 zone. Tough for Brogna out on the perimeter against the length of these Eastern Michigan players. Good quick touch pass from Majuk. Kept alive. Kamenicki's got it. Brogna now shoots the three. Got it. Big basket from the freshman. Sure was. That's a good rebound by Kamenicki. He kept that alive that time. Good kick out. Brogna squared up. He's fine. He nailed it that time. Well, he shot it with confidence, yes, too, did. Jerry. No oh, hesitation. Yeah. He did. Under eight minutes to play here in the first half. Strickland from the baseline. His first basket. Good passing there by, by the Eagles on that half court trip. Cardinals seven of 17 from the floor. Eastern five of 11. Really the difference at this point is just been what Ball State's been able to do as that ball is last touched by Kamenicki. What, what Ball State's been able to do in points off turnovers. Cardinals with nine points off of seven Eastern Michigan turnovers. Cardinals by five. For the big job or the do-it-yourself home improvement, a rental service company in Muncie can help with tool rental for any size job. Steel chainsaws, trimmers, blowers, sales and service, all at a rental service company. Ball State has led the entire way. The Cardinals' advantage has been as large as nine. A couple of statistics that jump out at you early. Ball State points off turnovers with a nine to two advantage there and eight to four in points in the paint. Yeah, that's where those are the two two areas that they had great success with uh, the previous time they played each other. Got to keep this half court defense alive. Ross into the ball game for the first time for Eastern Michigan. Where's number 21 has the ball now shoots it right away. Majuk. 
five rebounds already this afternoon. Brogdon missed it. Majuk kept a hand on it, but comes down and oh, look at the big fella getting on the floor. Yes, he is. He's really playing active today. Scaife got smacked in the face. Has now recovered. Well, Brogdon had an open shot there. I thought that was going down too. He was right there. He rattled it in, in and out. Shot clock under 10. Scape shoots it. No basket. Three seconds called on the Cardinals. Well, that's one of the things you have to watch for when you roam that painted area, which Ball State's had success against the 2-3 zone. You got to be careful. You got to keep moving and get out of there. It's too bad, too, because Scape had a wide open three. Brogna guarding Ross. Cardinals familiar man to man. Trying to get a much needed win at home here this afternoon. Ball State just one and four at home in Mac play. Sims knocks it down and count it. Three pointer and he'll shoot one. Sim, Sims has uh, got it going so far today. Again, he's always played well against Ball State. And boy, he was squared up that time. John just uh, his momentum took him into him with the body. Sims only averages four and a half a game, and he's got six, or excuse me, eight already. He's doubled the average nearly. Yep. Still five and a half minutes to play in the first half. Well, you hate to give up those second shots off of missed free throws. Let's see what happens here. See where the ball stake can get out of this. Ross sounded by Bond, and Bond called for the foul. It's the fourth team foul against Ball State. First foul on Bond. Good help there, but good help side defense there by, by Ball State. Strickland against Majuk. Last touch by Eastern. Ball State basketball. Well, Ball State got out of that one okay, Vince. Boy, you give up a second shot on a missed free throw, that usually hurts you. And Ball State was able to save embarrassment that time. Five minutes to play, first half. Ball State's nine point advantage down to two. Fields nearly had it knocked away, and now Bond struggles to get a hold of it. Cardinals will keep it on the held ball. Okay, good, good attempt there. Just lost the handle on it, but uh, good pass in there by the big fella, Zach Fields. There's lucky uh, ball wasn't uh, out of bounds for, well, it is for Ball State. Bond lobs it for Majuk, just out past his outstretched hands, and now Strickland comes to the other end, and it's knocked out of bounds. Good defense from Scaife to knock it out of bounds, and now we've got, like, double technicals as Scaife and Strickland exchanged words. Scaife pleading his case. Watch as Strickland goes to the basket and Scaife gets a good. Looks like maybe got a foul, but uh, not a call. Is out of bounds. I think Scaife didn't say anything. Didn't say anything. It's an overreaction, I think, by the official there, the out official. Very much overreaction. Majuk with the block. What great defense from Majuk, really making his presence felt with six rebounds. And now Rob Murphy upset. He didn't like that call right over in front of him. Yeah. 
Jalen Ross called for the foul. That is his first. Seventh on Eastern Michigan. So Ball State will be at the free throw line and Rob Murphy getting an explanation. Really impressed with the effort that uh, Mizuk Mizuk is giving out here, Vince. Both areas. I mean, he's really aggressive down at the uh, defensive end. Been very active offensively also. Scaife, one of the better free throw shooters for Ball State. The Cardinals just a 63% team from the free throw line. Jerry, they've shot 82 more free throws than their opponents, but have made only 12 more. That's yeah. not a good sign. Right, a lot of that's coming here at home, Vince. I mean, just what we were talking about in the open is that uh, just the stats haven't been as good as they need to be here in Worthen Arena. Hopefully today that will change. Scape helps with a couple from the stripe. He's got five points. Ball State's lead back to four. Scape comes out. It's Posley, Brogna, Bond, Majuk, and Fields for the Cardinals. It's a lineup you don't see out there too often. And there's a foul against Ball State. Ross and Sims along with Jamel Harris. Dalen Harrison and Glenn Bryant for Eastern Michigan. Brogna called for that foul, his second. Yep. Approaching the four minute mark here in the first half. Ball State has not trailed, but it has been tight most of the way, although the Cardinals did lead briefly by nine. Ross penetrates, draws the foul, and count it. Well, again, Vince, uh, Posley not, not doing a real good job guarding the basketball that time and allowed Ross to get way too deep on the defense. Ross will attempt to complete the three-point play when we return to Worthen Arena in Muncie. Veralia, leading manufacturer of glass bottles and jars, can trace its Muncie roots back all the way to 1887. And today, Veralia employs nearly 300 local employees and more than 15,000 worldwide. With a network spanning 47 countries, which serves 10,000 customers globally, Veralia is proud to continue supporting the communities in which its employees work and live. Veralia, forever glass. The Ball State Cardinals Trying to hold on to their advantage here in the late stages of the first half. Jalen Ross will step to the free throw line, trying to convert the three point play. The freshman out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Cannot. And Majuk pulls down his seventh rebound. Majuk has not scored, but he's been a factor on the glass with those seven rebounds. Also got a couple of block shots. Well, everybody's been double teaming him, and Easter's playing the 2 3 zone, which makes it very difficult to uh, get the ball into the big guy. Cardinals turn it Unforced. over. Yep. Harris working on Kamenicki. He's back into the ball game. Bryant spins and hits. Game is tied. See what kind of an athlete Bryant is. Again, he likes that little spin around jump shot. That's the way he hit, hit one previously a few minutes ago. So athletic, long yep. arms, good jumper. Well, so much for the fast start there, Vince. That, that was uh, ended real quick. Three minutes and counting. Cardinals trying to find something on the perimeter. Not much is there. Very aggressive defense from Eastern Michigan. Shot clock at five. Scaife lets it fly. A little contact there. Missed it. Kamenicki tipped it in. Well, you never know. You follow the shot thinking it's going to miss. That's what Kamenicki did. Got his hands up in the air, and it, by golly, it went in. Great job by Matt. Second basket for Kamenicki puts Ball State back on top. Two and a half to play, first half. Sims lets three go. Hit it again. Boy, J.R. Sims having another good game against Ball State. First lead of the game for Eastern Michigan. Sims had 12 against the Cardinals in that MAC opener, and he's got 11 here in the first half today. Now they've kind of changed their coverage on their 2 3 zone a little bit than they did the first game. They're playing more of a one guard front there, dropping the other guy right down the lane to help with some of that coverage down inside. And that's bothered Ball State a little bit today, Vince. Again, the shot clock under 10. Scaife drew a little bit of contact. Brogna forces one up. 
Air ball. Boy, just makes it makes it tough. They're doing a good job of guarding down inside. Kamenicki and Mazuk are having a hard time getting open. And the perimeter guys are not shooting it well so far. 30, 36% for the Cardinals so far, and only two out of 12 from the three. Kind of hard to open up the zone when you don't shoot real well. Builds that pressure too when you get down under 10 on the shot clock yep. and then you've got to try to make something happen from their perimeter when it's been hard earned anyway. Sims catch pass and finish. For Jamel Harris. Well done. Very good execution to trying to set Sims up on the on the double screen. Both guys went after Sims and. And. Uh, you know left uh, Harris open. We're really impressed with the game Sims has had today. Yep. Nice find there on the assist. Sims mom is a Ball State grad so a family affair here today. Brogna open for three. Chase Brogna second three pointer of the game. Well again when you when you force two guys to help on one that dribble penetration against the zone is really big and Ball State executed it well left Brogna wide open. Eastern Michigan wants a timeout with 44 seconds left to play here in the first half. You're watching this game here today may be interested in IU and Purdue. They're playing at Assembly Hall in Bloomington and the Hoosiers with a comfortable lead with about seven and a half minutes to play in the first half. This one here is tied thanks to that it's nice three pointer from Chase Brogdon. Well, you, two guys went after uh, Posey that time and it left Brogna open not good coverage there in the zone and Ball State found the weakness and uh, Brogna when he squared up he's got a good looking shot there Vince. He just didn't score in 18 minutes against Northern Illinois on Wednesday but he's knocked down a couple of three pointers here today he's really done a nice job as assistant coach Bob Simmons was telling me today working hard in practice always keeping ready and then when uh, yeah. Jesse Berry went down with injury Brogdon has been able to step in and deliver some good minutes. Well that's what you have to do the next guy up got to get it done and so far it's helped Ball State. Off the screen shot missed by Harrison and last touched by Eastern Ball State will get it with the shot clock off and twenty eight point seven left on the game clock. Well, they're going to take their time, probably get the try, try to get the last uh, last shot, not worry about uh, giving Eastern another possession to score, but try to work get something out of this zone defense for a last second shot. Well, and at worst, you go in tied, yep. as long as you don't turn it over and give up something. Turnover has really been the key for Ball State, Jerry. When they win, they turn it over less than 13 times a game. But when they lose, they turn it over 17 times. And, you know, four extra turnovers a game may not sound like much, but when you play as many close games as Ball State has played, games that have been tight in the second half, maybe they haven't always ended tight, but they've been tight in key stretches during the second half. You know, those extra turnovers make a difference. They really do. That When you have empty possessions, Vince, it just kills you as a team. And it takes a lot of the confidence away from you as an offensive, uh, you know, from the shooting standpoint, and just confidence uh, in setting good screens and attacking the defense of the opponent. Ball State shooting 39% here in the first half. Eastern at 50%. Yet the game is tied. Final seconds of the first half. Clock winds down. Scaife better do something with it quickly. Let's it fly. Missed it. Almost tipped in by Kamenicki. He thought maybe there was a foul. No call. And we go to the locker rooms. Tied at 24. Ball State led by as many as nine. Eastern Michigan had an advantage, but it was short lived. The Cardinals trying to build on a two game win streak. Knotted up at the break. Halftime here at Worthen Arena in Muncie. The Ball State 1989-90 men's basketball team being recognized here at halftime. Inducted into the Ball State Athletics Hall of Fame last night and getting some just due here 
at halftime along with uh, Tamara Bowie, Lisa Brown, and Todd Wright. Todd, of course, uh, outstanding football player here at Ball State, and Lisa, a terrific field hockey player. Tamara, outstanding basketball player. That 18, uh, 1989 90 Ball State basketball team is pretty good. You, you were coaching Miami back then, right? Vince, I was. We had a great celebration last night for all these inductees, but that, that basketball team was outstanding. They beat us twice that year. They had, they had a lot of responsibility in getting me fired over there at Miami. I guarantee you that. They were outstanding, tough to guard, had a little size, had good shooters. Great teamwork and well coached by Dick Hunsaker, who's a very personal friend of mine. He was here last night, Vince, and it was really great to see him. And all the fans loved for him to be back. Of course, that uh, Ball State basketball team, Paris McCurdy, Curtis Kidd, uh, Chandler Thompson, the names going yeah. on, Greg Miller. Yeah. Uh, went to the Sweet 16, lost to UNLV in a nail biter, and uh, UNLV went on to win the national championship that year. Yes, they did. They outscored uh, all their opponents by, you know, 10 to 15 to 20 points a game. Ball State only lost by two and had them right in the ropes and almost upset them. But just a great, great team and great celebration last night. Very well, uh, well accepted into the Hall of Fame last night. Mm, as well they should have been. The Ball State Cardinals at halftime with Eastern Michigan. Back at halftime here at Worthen Arena in Muncie, the Ball State Cardinals and the Eastern Michigan Eagles. Little uh, Cardinal Entertainment, a Ball State student. Uh, just kind of some of the things I see at your house when I stop by to visit Jerry, some of the talents that you have out in the backyard. Well, you need to have some of those pirouettes against that 2-3 zone for Ball State the second half, Vince. That's what I think. Uh, Cardinals uh, look to shoot it a little bit better, too. Just 37% from the floor in the uh, first half. They have to shoot a little better here in the second half if they're going to win this game. Well, they are. I'm real impressed with the activity of the 2-3 zone for Eastern Michigan. They're covering a little bit differently. They did it uh, trying to cover the three-point or the uh, painted area a little bit better today, and I think they're doing a good job of that. Ball State's got to continue to shoot well, a little bit better, and, and uh, get the break going, I think, and beat that zone before it gets set up. Second half action just ahead. We are tied at the intermission. Ball State and Eastern Michigan in the Mid-American Conference. Back at Worthen Arena in Muncie, the Ball State Cardinals and Eastern Michigan Eagles just a few minutes away from uh, second half action. Take a look at some of those first half highlights. Jerry, uh, uh, Ball State led by as many as nine in the first half, but one of the reasons why it's so tight at this point is the play of J.R. Sims. Sims with the steal and the basket there, knocks down a three-pointer here, has 11 points in the first half, averages four and a half per game. And the Ball State Cardinals just three of 14 from three point range in the first half. Chase Brogna with two of those three three pointers. And uh, Brogna in his first collegiate start uh, off the bench for six points. As you look at those numbers, what jumps out at you? Well, I think the field goal percentage for Ball State's not very good. Vince Eastern shooting it really well and showing good patience. And uh, Sims has been a big responsibility for that. But rebounding has been pretty solid. Uh, shooting uh, free throws wise is pretty pretty close. Actually, the paints uh, points in the paint. Ball State's got to continue to really get after that. But Got to get down, get the break going, I think, Vince, and try to get some easy baskets, just like they started the game, get some turnovers, be a little more active on the defense, and then uh, uh, things will go a little bit better for him, I think, in the second half. But you miss a guy like Barry against that zone because he can bust those threes. They have to watch him. It opens up a lot of things down in the interior, and that's where Ball State had great success the first time. And just to remind those uh, watching the game today, Jesse Barry, who uh, one of the Ball State double-figure scores, not playing again today because of concussion-like symptoms averages uh, just over 12 points per game second leading score on the team and the Cardinals also missing Tyler Cook Cook not a big score but one of those players that just kind of does a little bit of everything a little bit of the dirty work that uh, yep. uh, and and lend some experience to the Cardinals attack so uh, some of the depth missing from Ball State's game today well that you know you talk about experience that really is important against a 2-3 zone you know it's a, you don't see 2-3 zone for 40 minutes for very many teams except uh, Eastern or, or uh, Syracuse you see Tyler Cook standing there watching his team warm up but uh, that means a lot he can hit the three when he gets open as well but it's just one of those things that uh, you got to continue to get after it not let uh, Eastern get a little uh, a big lead on him here want to remind you to check out the Billy Taylor show get more on your Ball State Cardinals see it on the Ball State Sports Network the coaches show coach Taylor and host Joel Goodett Give you the insight to Cardinal basketball every week. Game highlights, statistics, game analysis. It's the Billy Taylor Show here on the Ball State Sports Network. Check local listings for showtimes in your area. 
We talked coming into this game as Ball State's home record just six and seven on the season one and four in the Mid-American Conference and how important those home wins are especially Jerry against a team like Eastern Michigan which has yet to win a game on the road all season. You can look at that one of two ways either Eastern's do or from Ball State's perspective this is not one you want to let slip away. Well that's exactly right especially because here's the other thing Vince you've already beaten them at home. You know, you, you want to get a no, get a two and zero record against a team because it could conceivably end up in a tie. You win the tiebreaker, but that can mean the difference between having that bye or going on the road, staying at home, whatever. So they're a half a game lead on Ball State right now. It's very important. So this last 20 minutes is going to be critical in terms of good execution by both basketball teams. You're going to have great intensity, like you see the the teams uh, listen to their coaches right now as this half gets ready to unload. Ball State coming off that win. Wednesday night in DeKalb, Illinois against Northern Illinois. Beat the Huskies 56-52. Eastern Michigan lost to Akron 70-62 on Wednesday. Of course, Akron hasn't lost a game in the conference all season, so no shame in losing to Akron, that's for sure. No, they they played everybody very strong. You know, they, their defense, the two-three zone, has been important. They're one of the better in the country. They're one of the better uh, field goal percentage defensive teams against the three-point shot because they extend that two-three zone out. Just exactly, Rob. Uh, you know, got his background really from Syracuse, from Jim Beheim, and that's the way they play. Sims and Harrison, along with Bryant, Riley, and Strickland for Eastern Michigan. Ball State with Bond Posley. Fields, Majuk, and Scaife. There's Riley with the turnaround. Off the mark, Sims offensive rebound, and it's going to be a second chance for the Eagles. Sims. First possession of the second half. Yeah, Sims did a great job, Vince, just going from way out outside to go in and get that rebound. Bryant, six foot eight, long arms, good leaper, draws the contact from Bond. Boy, Bryant is a tough matchup. Well, he really is. He's, he's, he's big, he's active. He loves that little start into his left and then spin back to his right shoulder with a little reverse pivot and shoot that. He shot that one there, and Bond went up with him and got him on the wrist as he shot it. So good possession for the for the Eagles here. And costly for Ball State because Bond picks up his third foul. Their best defensive player going to have to go to the bench after just 41 seconds in the second half. Well, that's exactly right. And, and, and you know, you get a guy that can really roam that baseline down there. So so now you have to go with a three guard lineup and bring uh, bring really Zach Fields in there who hasn't been real productive yet offensively and is uh, is a limited uh, against the zone. Brogna into the game for Ball State. Eastern stays in that zone defense. Cardinals nearly turned it over as Bryant got a hand on it. Shot clock now nears 10 as Scaife looks for some help. Ball State finds themselves deep in the shot clock again, and Scaife has it knocked away. And it's a shot clock violation. Yeah, they've had two or three of those today, and Again, wasted possession there for the Cardinals. Those hurt you. you got to get their, uh, got to get their uh, mojo back, so to speak, Vince, and get get a little confidence in their eyes and get some steals and get running here a little bit. Scaife with just five points here this afternoon. He's averaged almost 18 a game in MAC play. That's third best in the conference as Bryant knocks down another one. Scaife hasn't been able to get. Untracked here so far this afternoon. Ball State needs him. Yes, they do. And guess who watches him very closely is, it, is Eastern Michigan. Well, Sims almost got the steal there. He went after it, but his body ran into Majuk. So foul on Sims. But uh, again, they're two, they kind of smell it, Vince. They're being a little more active on their on their defense and looking to run. Well, Jerry, sometimes, and we've got a long way to go here, but sometimes when you're that team on the road that hasn't been able to get anything done on the road all season, you most sometimes play a little more free than that team that's trying to protect the home court and desperately needs that home win. Yeah, he's exactly right. Pressure, the pressure definitely is on Ball State a little more than Eastern right now. 
Scaife three off the mark. Posley got a hand on it. Scaife gets it right back. Majuk jump hook draws the foul and he's going to go to the free throw line. Majuk just his second shot attempt of the game. He's got eight rebounds, but hasn't been much of a factor offensively. Well, I know, it. and I think that because of the long arms, and Eastern's really watched him, kept him from uh, getting posted up as, as easily as, as he did, and they're not letting Ball State get uh, get inside the, the uh, perimeter that, or the inside of the defense there against the 2-3 zone, and that's caused some problems for Majuk. He's 54% from the free throw line this season. You know, Jerry, Majuk had just two field goal attempts in that game Wednesday night against Northern Illinois only eight shots from the field in his last three games and uh, we're talking about a player that averages a double double tough to put double figure points on the board when you're only getting two or three shots a game. That's right. Teams have, have decided that they're going to double up. Ohio showed that and ever since they've watched films of that each team has done that now and it's, it's really limited his uh, accessibility and his opportunities to score. And now a tough call for Majuk on the defensive end having to guard Glenn Bryant. Bryant with the basketball and now Sims who's really been their best player so far this afternoon. Bryant misses and Strickland chases it down and it's going to be another 35 for the Eagles. A good hustle there by Strickland on that loose ball. Let's see what happens on their second possession here. Remember Ball State's top defensive player Chris Bond on the bench with three fouls. That one's going the other direction. Deshante Riley called for the illegal screen against Eastern Michigan. I think it's one of those games, Vince. So you, uh, Billy's going to have to gamble here pretty soon and probably probably have to put uh, Bond back in there and and uh, hopefully that it works out. I mean, it's just you got to gamble here. Uh, Maybe a little early right now, but uh, I bet uh, here in the short uh, span that he'll get him back in there. Scaife three-pointer again off the mark. Majuk chases it down. Scaife unhappy with himself. He knew he had a good look at it, just didn't get it. Yes, he did. It was good inside-outside look by Majuk. He did a good job of uh, finding that's what's open against the zone. Fields wants it and gets it. Riley leaned over and knocked it away and kept it alive and then threw it off the shoulder of his teammate Strickland or uh, Harrison I should say so Eastern gives it back to the Cardinals Riley did a nice job of getting himself around uh, the big fella uh, fields to knock it loose so he did a great did his job well tough position for Ball State to inbounds this is where Eastern Michigan stole it a couple of times on the inbounds pass in the first half and just that type of play right there. The Cardinals narrowly escape and Scaife will have it with 16 minutes to play in the game. Fouled by Sims. Well one one good thing is Ball State can get in this bonus early Vince. That's four to one on fouls and you just keep working and attacking. Got to attack the defense. Third foul on Sims. He's the leading scorer today for Eastern Michigan. Has 11 points, 4 of 4 from the floor. Cardinals turn it over. Strickland lobs it for Bryant. He was about ready to go out of bounds, so kind of sloppy here in the second half. Yeah, Coach Murphy can't believe it. They just let one slip away right there. It's just very sloppy play by the Eagles. You know, it's plays like that, Jerry, while you're under 500 on the yep. season, you're 4 and 6 in yep. conference play, and you're winless on the road. That's exactly right, Vince. That's what causes it. And there's a foul. Scaife's going to go to the free throw line. But to be fair to uh, Eastern Michigan, we've seen that on both sides of the court. Ball State yeah, hasn't have. been as sharp as they need to be today yep. either. Eastern Michigan with a four point lead. For the big job or the do it yourself home improvement, a rental service company in Muncie can help with tool rental for any size job. Steel chainsaws, trimmers, blowers, sales and service. Find it all at a rental service company. Now the Ball State Cardinals having trouble finding the basket. We've played four and a half minutes here in the second half and Ball State has yet to score. The Cardinals led by nine in the first half. We were tied at the break and Eastern Michigan with four points here in the second half, leading by four with Jawan Scaife at the free throw line. Missed three in a row from the foul line. 
Vince, boy, I mean, miss these at home. I'm, these opportunities, you've got to cash in. Scaife now with a half dozen. Ball State's first point here in the second half. Kamenicki back into the ball game for Ball State. He joins Majuk, Posley, Scaife, and Brogna. It's Harrison scores for Eastern. You know, they just did that little weave, and Harrison was able to make that little spin move. Got it in there too deep. Average is almost 10 a game. That's his first basket of the contest. It's Austin Harper in guarding, keeping a close eye on Scaife. Chases Scaife over there on the sideline. Shot clock at five. Kamenicki gets it underneath. Tried to dish to Majuk. Last touched by Eastern Michigan, but just one second on the shot clock. Where Kamenicki looks like his back's really hurting him. It's really wincing down in there. You can just see it. And here comes, uh, here comes Bond. Doesn't surprise me at all. Probably coming back in. Yeah. Posley. He's going to come for Posley. Mm -hmm. Kamenicki was riding the bicycle over on the yep. sideline when he was not in the game. And as you said, Jerry's and well documented, really some serious issues with his back. Brodna let it fly off the iron and then chases it down. Good hustle from the freshman. Boy, Ball State was in a no win situation there and uh, made something out of nothing. Yes, they did. Brodna hustled that time. That's why he's playing a little bit. Scaife missed the three. Majuk trying to keep it alive on the iron. Can't get it down, and here comes Austin. Austin Harper dishes, and Bryant finishes. Boy, Bryant's really come alive. He's got a half dozen here in the second half. Well, he has, and they came out running that time. Ball State didn't do a good job getting back in defense. They got to get, uh, got to get themselves realigned here. Got to get their running game going, Vince. Be a little more aggressive, and, uh, you know, you're going to have to dribble into the into the teeth of that zone a little bit more. I think they're trying to pass too much around. I'd like to see him dribble the gaps a little bit and uh, go a little inside outside to try to be effective. 18 of Ball State's 29 shots have been three point attempts, Jerry, and that's given you an indication of, uh, I think, the success of uh, the Eastern Michigan defense. They are really forcing Ball State to shoot that perimeter shot and giving up very little inside. Well, they got burned so badly up at Eastern, and that's what they've uh, worked on uh, in preparation for Ball State. So they forced them to shoot outside. Ball State hasn't uh, taken advantage of it. And in comparison, only seven of Eastern's 25 shots shots have been three point attempts so maybe no wonder that Eastern shooting 52 percent from the floor and Ball State shooting 31 percent. That's exactly right. Good penetration. I want to remind you to tune in to the Ball State Sports Network Saturday. Coach Brady Salee and the Ball State women's basketball team will host the Northern Illinois Huskies here at Worthen Arena. Mac West matchup begins at two o'clock Ball State and Northern Illinois women's basketball. Saturday, February 23rd on the Ball State Sports Network. Vince, I have to say something about the women's basketball team. Coach Brady has done a great job, really fun to watch. You can see what they're doing on the floor. They, uh, they are down to like seven or eight players is all they have. So he has to really work around that. And uh, they're just outstanding. They move the basketball well, screen real well. I'm just very impressed with the way they play. He's got it going, and uh, he's going to have a very good program here in time. So certainly support the Ball State women's team again. That's fe uh, Saturday, February 23rd. Ball State and Northern Illinois. Well, we've played just under six minutes here in the second half, and Ball State has yet to make a basket. And Eastern Michigan has built its lead to seven. Eastern, a team that has yet to win a game on the road this season. 0 and 10. Well, the second meeting between the two. They opened up the conference schedule against one another in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Ball State escaped with a 60 to 58 win in that game. Chris Bond, a couple of free throws, less than a second to go, won it. A little token press by Eastern Michigan there. Didn't bother Ball State at all. Let's see if they can get a little better shot early in the shot uh, possession. Really like to see Jawan Scaife. Knocks something down from the perimeter. He's 0 of 8 from three-point range. Has the ball there. Brogna gave a look at it. 
There's Bond inside. Shot is blocked by Harrison. And as Ross tried to save it from going out of bounds, he stepped on the inline. Another Ball State break. Cardinals really got a, got a break there. And the officials are talking about it. I'm, you know, the official that made that call was standing right there. So I'm, unless they're talking, Jerry, about uh, whether or not the shot clock should reset. And that is indeed what they're going to discuss. Coach Murphy was pretty upset, I think, about that particular call. He was cleared out the middle of the bench. And I think that's what they're looking at to see if there was an actual change of possession. Bond got it underneath. Yeah, so. If they don't reset the shot clock, it looks like there's maybe three or four seconds. But Jerry, I don't know why they wouldn't reset it because Eastern had possession of the basketball and stepped on the inline. Right. So shouldn't they reset the shot clock to 35? Yeah, I mean, be because I mean, did, did hitting the rim is not a factor on this. It didn't. Nothing hit the rim, but well, I think the, the my thought would be that the possession block. has changed. Yep. Right there, possession changes, and then the official makes the call that Ross was standing on the inline. So I think the change of possession should reset the shot clock. Yeah, I think that's what they're going to call too. Well, well, they're not. They're not. Hmm. So I guess they didn't feel like that because he stepped out of bounds as he caught the ball. It wasn't a change of possession. Vince is probably what it, what it is. Well, the official didn't call it immediately when he took possession. So. But just the same final seconds ticking off, and it is now a shot clock violation. Oh, boy. You know, Eastern did a good job again. They're, they, they're going after Scaife real hard, not letting him get anything open. That's smart. Scaife has been so good of late for the Cardinals. As mentioned, averaging just under 18 a game in Mac play. But it's been a struggle today. One of 10 from the floor. Cardinals force another turnover. This is what they need to do is get the, to get the thing going in possession, in uh, transition. Scaife draws contact. He'll go back to the free throw line. Get their hands working down there defensively. That uh, turnover caused all that and push the ball hard up the floor and try to get into their offense before the defense gets set, Vince. That's a, that's a good attack uh, against any kind of zone. Third foul on Deshante Riley, and here's Joan Scaife. Now four of six from the free throw line today. Ball State 63% from the free throw line as a team. We've played seven minutes in the second half and Ball State still doesn't have a basket. Betrayal by only six. Good day. Sit down and guard. Ready, guys. Bond guarding Harrison. Bond with three fouls, and there's Scaife called for the reach around. Yeah, they're trying to even it up on the fouls, Vince. Six to ten. That's kind of a t shirt foul, I thought. Well, as much contact as we've seen today. Yeah, they've let a lot of stuff go to call that one, haven't they? Gee. Majuk comes out. Fields, Kamenicki, Bond, Scaife, and Posley for the Cardinals. Balkama, Ross, Harper, Harrison, and Bryant for the Eagles. Harper drives it in and scores it. No, oh, offensive foul. Wipe it off. It's Kamenicki drawing the charge again. Second time today he's done that. Yep, well done. Boy, that's big right there. Boy, Kamenicki's really hurting Jerry, as you documented early. The back has given him some problems, and now Kamenicki comes out. Yeah, you can tell. It's like got a back spasm, like it's really tight. He'll probably go get on the bike again. 
And he does. Doesn't even sit down on the bench. Just goes straight to the bicycle. Trying to stay warm and loose. Posley, three, off the mark. Rebound pulled down by Harrison. Well, it wasn't a bad three by Posley. He just didn't make it, but. Harrison comes back with a three, missed it. Last touched by Bryant, out of bounds to Ball State. It's 12 minutes left in this game. Ball State shooting a one and one Number each time, so they need to be uh, they need to be aggressive down there and get the ball down inside, and attack the basket. Jerry, eight minutes gone in the second half. The Cardinals still don't have a basket here yep. in the second half. You got to find a way to get the ball down inside. The three's not falling. Inside out, it's away. Ball State three of 18 from beyond the arc today. Shooting under 30% from the floor. But still in this game. Turnover, Cardinals, 13th giveaway. And now they steal it right back. Bond got his hand on it. Posley draws contact, and he'll go to the free throw line. Well, if you can't get a basket, at least you're going to the free throw line. This will be the seventh and eighth free throw attempts of the second half for Ball State. We'll see those shots from Posley when we return to Muncie. 8 and a half minutes have been played here in the second half, and Ball State still does not have a basket. Jawan Scaife, the Cardinals' leading scorer, really struggling today. One of 10 from the floor, 0 of 8 from three-point range. Jerry, here's a guy that's averaging about 18 points a game in conference play. He's been your go-to guy lately. As a coach, do you want him to still keep going to the well even though he's having such a tough night? Yeah, no question about it, Vince. And I think the way that they get the shots, I think they Ball State's got to find a way to get the ball into the paint and then back out. Because if they set the, the outside players that are guarding Juwan down inside a little bit and have some success, that's going to open it back up. Maybe some cross-court passing would be good, dribbling and kicking it out. But yeah, you got to keep going to him. He's going to make some here going down the stretch. Posley hits the first of two. All three of Ball State's points here in the second half have come from the free throw line. Posley steps up and knocks down a couple of big ones. Brogna comes back into the game and Scaife. I think goes this to the bench. Yeah, giving him a little rest. Vince might have something to do with it too, because he's uh, he's he's had to fight a lot of defensive uh, heat out there the entire game. Can't imagine he'd be on the bench long. Sims and kicking it around the perimeter. J.R. Sims from Fort Wayne Schneider High School has had a big game for Eastern Michigan today. 11 points, three rebounds. Eastern not showing a whole lot of patience on that uh, that possession right there. They're, well, they they got to look to uh, Majuk's getting posted in there. They got to just make some throws down inside there. Well, Balkama. Holding Majuk down underneath and now battling it up, bodying it up with uh, Zach Fields. There Here's it is. Majuk in the paint. Foul. They'll go to the free throw line and shoot two. Majuk still has not made a basket in this game either. He's huh. been fouled a couple of times in the act of shooting, but otherwise just one shot from the floor. He got the ball down inside there, but as we watch this replay, Vince, you're going to see him catch it down in and watch what he does. He fades towards the bench. He kind of fades away. That makes it very difficult to make the shot. He needs to go right back into the player. Hopefully that he can get that one to fall. Scape's coming back in the game for Ball State. Got a little rest. And uh, Bond's going out there trying to protect him with foul trouble. So. Uh, that inside outside play getting Majuk down in there and letting him uh, let them work and then when they collapse back in then, then kicking it back out to Scaife will open something up. Two big free throws from Majuk who shoots just 54 percent from the line. So to step up and knock down a couple very important for Ball State. First two points of the game for Majuk to go with 10 rebounds. It's amazing that Ball State is down just two points. We played 1040 and the Cardinals don't have a basket in the second half. Yeah, it is amazing. Still the deficit is just two and they're going to get the ball back with a chance to take the lead as Eastern turns it over. Yep. Uh, Posey did a nice job that time of defending that little uh, handoff situation there for Eastern Michigan and caused the turnover. So he and Brogdon played that very very well. Ball State assistant. 
coach Bob Simmons saying before the game that uh, the coaching staff has been really pleased with the team's attitude and the, despite some heartbreaking losses and certainly the season hasn't gone the way that Ball State would have hoped yet the players have kept a positive attitude and kept the work ethic. It's going to maybe pay off on a game like this one where they've struggled to get the ball down in the hoop but still right there in it. It's amazing what happens Vince when you get the ball down inside now easy miss right there but again it opens some stuff up. Watch Ball State continue to work to do that. Sims for three. Can't give him that one. He has knocked it down today. Well, Brogdon wasn't sure who he had. A little indecision there cost him. Yep, Sims has had a career day. He has not missed, Jerry. He's no. five of five from the floor, four of four from three-point range. Well, just the way an Indiana kid wants to do it here in Muncie. And Majuk throws it away. Well, Majuk probably should have bounced it one more time. He probably had a layup. He maybe overpassed that time. But they got to throw the ball in there to him. He was posted up the last time and Brogdon just missed him. His inexperience didn't allow him to see how open he was. You have to throw it down in there. Well, these possessions now, Vince, are getting critical now. Each one is, uh, is really key. I think you can let Eastern get too much of a lead here. Bryant draws the contact. Count it. Big bucket from Glenn Bryant, the redshirt junior out of Detroit. He lets it go to his left, and he does right here. And likes that little fade away. Started his career at Arkansas and then transferred, sat out last season, playing in his first campaign for Eastern Michigan at season high 17 points a couple of weeks ago against Buffalo. And you can see why he could put some points on the board. Has a dozen today. Skay finally knocks one down. Boy, been a long time coming for Jawan Skafe. Big basket. We'll see if that gets him going. Yep. Good kick ahead there by Marcus Posley. And that's what Ball State needs to do. They got to play faster. And when they do that, get in a little more rhythm and beat the defense before it has his chance to really get set up and pack it in. Cardinals need some stops now. Down five with eight and a half to play. Ball State went 11 minutes without a basket here in the second half. Kamenicki kept it alive, but Bryant comes away with it. And now he shoots the three and hits it. Boy, I tell you, those missed, those missed opportunities when you don't get the rebound really, really hurt. Well, a second chance pays dividends for Eastern Michigan. Posley shoots the three short. It's an eight point lead for Eastern Michigan. Coach over there, Coach Murphy yelling out the weave. Let's see if it gets uh, Sims open here. I think if you're Coach Murphy of Eastern Michigan, you just want your Eagles to take some clock as well. Yeah, and that's what they're doing each possession. They're running, they're running 20 seconds off that shot clock each time. Bryant rises and misses, and there's going to be a whistle and a foul. It's going to be Deshante Riley over the back of Majuk. Ball State's going to shoot the one and one, but we're going to have a timeout first. Cardinals need to get something figured out. Ball State trailing at home by eight. Veralia, leading manufacturer of glass bottles and jars, encourages everyone to help the environment by recycling glass food and beverage containers. Glass is endlessly recyclable, which means it can be recycled over and over to create new bottles and jars. That would be recycl recyclable. <laughs> Easy for me to say, right? Help save energy and natural resources while also reducing landfill waste by recycling glass containers. Veralia, forever glass. Well, Ball State in desperate need of some offense here, something then something other than from the free throw line. The Cardinals with one basket in 12 and a half minutes. 
of the second half. Well, even these one and two point two shot free throws, Vince, you got to at least whittle into this lead a little bit, but you step up there and miss some of them, and that that kills you. Let's watch the uh, time that Eastern takes off this uh, shot clock now. Seven point game. Scaife, Bond, Posley, Majuk, and Kamenicki on the floor for the Cardinals. It's Harper, Strickland, Bryant, Riley, and Sims for Eastern Michigan. And there's Bryant again. Boy, he is having a big game. 17 points. Yep. Yeah, he is a he's a dandy. He's an excellent, excellent player. Matches his season high from a couple of weeks ago against Buffalo, and there's Another miss from Scaife as Strickland is called for the foul over the back. Which yeah. Juwan Scaife really having a tough day. 0 of 9 from three point range. And he's had some good looks, Jerry, but just uh, some days you just don't have the stroke. Well, that's exactly right. And maybe some little, a few shot fakes because he had uh, Bryant going out after him that time, had his hand up, didn't block it, but. Again, just taking that, uh, getting the timing off his shot just a little bit. Still want to see Ball State drive it a little bit more and get the ball down inside and then kick it back out. If it ball comes from inside out to Scaife, then it really makes the shot easier. Majuk four of eight from the free throw line. He's got 12 rebounds, but all his points have come from the strike. You know, taking their time again, working their little weave. Can't trade a basket for a free throw. Nope, not with an eight point deficit. And Posley is called for the bump against Austin Harper. Well, it, Posley's got to give a little bit of space there. And they're going to try to gonna try to even up its 10 to 10 to four on the foul. So. Again, a little t-shirt foul, but still that hurts Ball State, especially when the shot clock's winding down. Did give Eastern a fresh 35. Although at some point you might want to make sure Eastern is in the bonus to at least get that one and one because you're likely going to have to foul to send them to the free throw line here in the closing minutes. Harper working on Posley and he draws the foul and he'll shoot two. Austin Harper, the redshirt junior from Grand Haven, Michigan, started his career at Western Michigan. Transferred to a junior college and then made his way to Eastern Michigan. Again, Vince, uh, Eastern was able to work the shot clock down. They ran about 25 seconds off there to 30 seconds off, and then Harper takes it one on one. Posey's got to move his feet, not let him get so deep. So, again, Eastern Eastern has had the tempo of the entire second half without question. Matches their largest lead of nine. Now 10 is the biggest lead of the game for Eastern Michigan. Eastern Michigan trying to win on the road for the first time this season. And now Majuk can't find the handle on it, and Eastern's got it again. Well, not a real good pass by Kaimanicki. He was trying to get it in there, but he threw it down at Majuk's feet. We've played almost 15 minutes here in the second half, and Ball State has one basket. Game was tied at the break, yep. and now the Cardinals find themselves down 10 after leading by nine in the first half. Harper again works Posley. Kamenicki kept it alive, and now the Cardinals go to the offensive end. Knocked out of bounds, last touched by Ball State. Let's we'll see. Yeah, Calhoun coming in for Kamenecki. You know, they've had too many empty possessions, Vince, when they have to cut into this lead. You can't go down and throw the ball away. Ball State will put full court pressure on Eastern Michigan. Try to gen generate some offense through the defense here. You know, I think Eastern's been very disciplined. Done a nice job here in the second half of uh, doing what they do best and running that shot clock. Yeah. 
Eastern Michigan is going to take a timeout with 446 to play. Coach Rob Murphy wants to make sure his players have a full grasp of the plan here over this final stage of the game. Well, they can get a 12 point, 13 point lead here on this possession. I mean, it's a good planned timeout, Vince, and it just, just it puts the dagger in a little bit deeper to Ball State. Cardinals not only have just that one basket here in the second half, but have missed six free throws in the second half as well. Next up for Ball State will be the bracket buster at Southeast Missouri. It's next Saturday. And a home game against Central Michigan. On the road to take on Toledo. That game at Southeast Missouri events will be a tough one. That'll, that'll be, it's a tough place to play. They're not having a great year, but uh, still a long drive, and uh, it'll be a tough contest for them. Under five minutes to go in the game, and Harper manages to get it in again. Back to back offensive possessions in which Harper has scored two free throws and then a basket. Yeah, the confidence of Eastern Michigan has been just unbelievable here in the second half. Cardinals keep possession, but the shot clock at 15, and now Billy Taylor wants to talk it over. It's not desperation time here for the Cardinals with 4.15 to play. Yeah, they're going to have to get uh, get something here, uh, Vince. Billy's trying to just draw up something to get uh, to get them in there against the 2-3 zone to try to get a, either a three or inside outside play. But uh, they got to get something going and then uh, going to have to get the heat turned up defensively a little bit. Try to keep uh, Eastern from running time off the clock. Ball State had so much success in the first meeting between these two teams at Ypsilanti with that interior pass and that especially on the baseline. They got a lot of offense off the baseline down around the basket in that first meeting. And credit Rob Murphy in Eastern Michigan. He's made that adjustment, and Eastern has not given up those baskets here in this second meeting. No, they really haven't. I think one of the reasons is that, is that uh, the, the person out front, Vince, in the guard position that's not guarding the basketball is way back in the lane there, and that kind of helps defend that high post area and allows his other three players down inside to guard the baseline better. And I think that's the adjustment that they've made. Scaife, long three-pointer, and he hits it. Finally, boy, a long time coming after missing nine from beyond the arc. Juwan Scaife finally knocks one down. Yeah, Easton was just a little late getting to him, and he, he had a good, good rhythm into his shot. That's when he's effective. None too soon. Now the Cardinals come up with some stops. Harper breaking Brogna down off the dribble. Well, Brogna, Brogna just just got beat off the dribble, Vince. You can't get, you just can't get beat that easily. He just gave up on it. It's an 11-point Eastern Michigan lead. 20-point swing as Brogna lets three fly, missed it. Ball stayed led by nine in the first half, tied at the break, and now down by 11. Ball State playing without two of its key players and Jesse Berry and Tyler Cook, but they won the last couple of games without them. Ball State with a two game winning streak. But that is in serious jeopardy right now. And Barry Berry's the kind of zone buster that you got to have without him today made it tough. Sims scores at the basket. Yeah, they just able to do anything that they want to Vince every possession easily get into the basket. And uh, Ball State's defense is broken down. They've lost their, they've just lost their confidence defensively and not guarding the basketball at all. And that puts even added pressure on your def on your uh, offense down to the other end then. Well, you can't say enough about the performance of J.R. Sims today. A career high 16 points for Sims. Yeah, that good game against Ball State the first time they met, but he has been spot on this afternoon. Six of seven from the floor, four of five from three-point range. And watch him just slice it right into the paint and makes it look easy. Makes it look easy, especially against, uh, you know, Bond just didn't move his feet very well that time either. I don't know if he didn't want to get his fourth foul or what, but 
that was much too easier for too easy for Sims. This game has gotten really out of hand here in the second half, Vince, and, and uh, Ball State didn't have an answer to the activity of uh, Eastern Michigan's defense. Played 17 and a half minutes, Ball State here in the second half with just two baskets. Scaife fouled as he was shooting the three-pointer, and he'll go to the free-throw line and shoot three, but first, a timeout. Eastern has blown it open, but Ball State will have one last chance, down 13. Two thirty-two to play in this one here in Worthen Arena in Muncie. Just a quick look around the Mid-American Conference. A good one in Athens today. Ohio beating Kent State 78-75. That one was in overtime. Ohio, I think, just lost once in the yep. conference. And, of course, Akron has not lost at all in MAC play. And uh, the Zips will host Bowling Green later tonight. I don't think there's any question about it. Akron, Ohio is the toast of the Mac in basketball this year. They're far and away the best teams. Kent State's not bad, but they're not like they usually are. And, and Western Michigan's a pretty good team too, Vince, but they're still not in the class of Kent or of Akron and Ohio. Juwan Scaife with the first of three free throws. Well, it's really been a great couple of games for Scaife. He had 30, career high 30, and that went over Western Michigan, then came right back with 23 Wednesday night at Northern Illinois. But it has been tough going for the outstanding player from Muncie today. Three of 13 from the floor, one of 10 from three point range. Makes two of three on those free throws, and then Riley knocked it out of bounds, so Ball State's going to get it back. Well, Eastern keeps making a few little uh, few little errors that allows Ball State to again close this gap a little bit, but they haven't been able to do it. Seems kind of out of bounds play where you can get. Scaife rises for three and hits it. Scaife with 17 points. You know, we talk about despite the fact that he's had a tough game today, he's still been able to put up some numbers. But Ball State down by eight with 205. Can they possibly find a way to claw back in this one and have a shot at the end? You know, they still have a chance, Vince. I mean, there's no question. They cause a turnover or whatever, but uh, Eastern Michigan coaches screaming at their players to come and help somebody, help the guy with the basketball. He's getting trapped out there, and everybody's hiding down here. Drives you crazy from a coaching standpoint. All they had to do is make one pass. They probably had a layup at the other end. But uh, Ball State's going to keep the pressure on. So, you know, I hope it's not just too little too late, Vince. Still an eight-point lead with 2.05 is a tough act to uh, overcome, but... Strange things happen, and they're the home team. I want to say hello and a special thanks to all our affiliates along the lines of the Ball State Sports Network during the game today. It's our flagship station, WIPB TV, here in Muncie. All our friends throughout the Indianapolis area, Fort Wayne, Jeffersonville, even down in Louisville, Kentucky. Thank you for being a part of the Ball State Sports Network. Cardinals trying to have a miracle finish and come back here against Eastern Michigan after leading by nine in the first half, falling behind by 11 here in the second half. Comes that weren't a bonus yet, so going to have to continue to try to get a steal and foul right away. Hoping to just make a defensive stand here on this. Oh, that's going the other direction. Jalen Ross is going to be called for the foul on Eastern Michigan, and that is a very costly miscue. Well, there wasn't any question it was a foul. So offensive foul, so possession for Ball State. Oh, they're going to the line. That's right, going to the line to shoot it. Watch Ross as he wants to set the screen here. He's going to turn this back and 
Scaife. Not sure if there was a, quite enough contact to knock Scaife down quite that hard, but yeah. uh, Juwan did exactly what he should do by yep. it's a possession putting for a little State. drama on it yep. and getting the call. No shooting. Got to get the shots up. Cardinals need to score and score quickly. Down eight. Under 90 seconds left in the game. Boy, they're doubling up. Scaife big time. Posley almost lost it and calls timeout with 10 seconds on the shot clock. So Ball State ran a lot of time there, time they really don't have the luxury. Well, exactly. I mean, they couldn't get anything inside, but could have maybe shot fake possibly Vince and drove it down inside off the dribble. I'd like to see him use that dribble to get down inside that zone a little bit more. Well, we've seen Majuk flash open several times today, but you've got to be so quick, almost anticipate that he's going to be open because yeah. I think Eastern's done a nice job of getting that zone rotation yeah. over, but there have been times where the window has been there to get the ball to Majuk, and, and, yeah. and it hasn't gone in. Right. It has, uh, it's like the passer doesn't see that he's open. The timing of the pass and and, the, and uh, Majuk getting open has been off and and uh, it hasn't been seen so Ball State shooting under 32 percent from the floor and you know we talk about Ball State's record at home here the Mid-American Conference one and four and during those games the Cardinals at home shooting just 38 percent and we talk about their 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 home deficiencies and then it's even Worse, worse today at 32 percent against the team that has not won a game on the road all season. Well that's right Benson and you have two good games you went two and two in a row and you, you had a few good things going and I know Coach Simmons says they've been practicing well and that's great the kind of kids that they have and and you hope that that continues right on through the end of the season. But you can't come out and uh, be tied at halftime and then not uh, give up some easy dribbles some easy baskets. Uh, Eastern Michigan shot the ball very very well today over 54 percent and uh, you know their their average is uh, well well below that. Scaife open for three missed it. Rebound pulled down by Riley. And quickly Posley fouls Austin Harper. So Eastern Michigan's going to go to the other end and shoot the one and one. And the game likely to be decided at the free throw line now. And Austin Harper is a 75% free throw shooter. He hadn't shot that many free throws this year, but I get a feeling that he's a pretty good, pretty good shooter and doesn't get rattled at the line. How about that? Throws him up. One minute to play. Did you there it is. Nice feed and Bond finishes and a foul. Great look from Majuk to find Bond on the baseline. That's the kind of offensive efficiency we saw in the first meeting between these two. That's exactly right. That's what was, that's what's got to get open. We've talked about how important it is to get it down in the paint. Good cutting action and that's what Ball State had success with the first uh, first meeting. So. Again, Vince, uh, nice little run here. Got the crowd into the game a little bit, showing a little bit of excitement. And uh, try to get the hands in, uh, make the free throw, press, get the hands back into to, uh, Harper, and let him miss another one. Jerry, we just spoken a moment ago about getting the ball inside to Majuk, and it's not always for a shot no. attempt, because when you can get it into the big guy, that does open up some other things along the baseline, just as we saw in that last sequence. That's what's vulnerable. That's what the vulnerable uh, versus a two-three zone. The two-three zone is very vulnerable with the with the ball in the middle right there. That's an open area. You get it in there, and it's just very, very difficult to guard. You're going to give up layups. Chris Bond scored the first two baskets of the game, and had not scored again until that basket. And quickly the Cardinals foul Bryant. So Glenn Bryant's going to walk down and go to the free throw line. He's a 64% free throw shooter. Not a great free throw shooting team from Eastern either, under 70%. A little better than Ball State, but uh, still, this is not a team that has routinely gone to the free throw line and knocked them down with 
consistency. So it's a two possession game, yes, Jerry. We've seen stranger things happen. Shaw Bryant's leaping ability down there on that free throw. Or on that missed uh, free throw down there at the other end. And again, he looked good on that, that attempt. 18 points for Bryant. Scaife rises, misses. Bond keeps it alive. 40 seconds to play. Brogna lets it fly way off the mark, but Majuk is there, and then the shot is blocked by Riley. Foul called. Majuk will go to the line. Took Majuk a long time to gather that ball, and then watch how long it takes. It's an air ball. Instead of springing right back up where he might have gotten the dunk, kind of brought it down. He's going to have to go to the free throw line, and he has struggled from the line today. Four of eight, 15 rebounds for Majuk, but just two shot attempts. Yeah, I just would have loved to have seen Ball State have that ability to get him the ball much earlier in the game and have success. That's what they did successfully. And of course, you, again, you got to give a lot of credit to the scouting report of Eastern Michigan. The coaches did a good job. They took that away. They've watched it. They didn't make it as, as accessible to Ball State today, and it's been a big factor in, uh, in their lead so far. Majuk averages 11 and a half points and 10 rebounds per game. That was his fifth point today. Well, 15 big rebounds. Been a, been a monster on the boards today. Need this free throw. Still a two possession game. Cardinals are going to have to foul if they don't get the steal, and there is the foul. Sims going to walk to the other end and go to the free throw line. You'd like to get the you'd like to get the steal, but if you don't get it, you got a foul right away. And yeah, Scaife did just that. Yeah, and Eastern did a nice job of getting uh, getting a guy that's uh, thorn in Ball State's side today. Sims has been outstanding, and he's uh, 60 61 percent shooter from the line, so 62. So it might be a guy to. Right guy to to uh, to foul here. Sims 0 for 1 from the free throw line today, but uh, doesn't miss much else. 6 of 7 from the floor, 4 or 5 from three point range, and he missed it. Helps Ball State. Under 30 seconds, it's a two possession game. Don't need a three here, but take it if you can get it. Scaife gets the two pointer. And a foul against the Cardinals, but they're down just three with 23 seconds left. Well, you're going to look at the score tonight, maybe the box score, and you're going to see Jawan Scaife with at least 19, because that's what he's got right now. And well, you would, wouldn't know just by the number how hard he's had to work to get him. Yes, Nothing has. has come easy for Jawan Scaife today. Credit him with keeping his head up and uh, getting the job done despite a tough shooting night. Yeah, Ross is not a good free throw shooter either. Drained that one without any problem. Makes it a two possession game. <laughs> Under 20, Ball State down four. Oh, Scaife just got hammered and no call. Bryant will lay it in. Boy, that. That was a clear foul right in front of the official. Scaife lays it in, but it's not going to be enough. Sims finishes with authority. And that's going to do it. 56 50. Boy, Jerry. Right down here on that next to last possession, Scaife was trying to draw the contact and right down his arm, but might not have made a difference. But at that point, it was still close enough to where 
You like three free it. throws, three free throws could have very well made a difference. Yeah, it did. Just one of those things. Just didn't break their way today. It did not. Ball State falls 56-50 at the hands of Eastern Michigan. So the Cardinals' two-game winning streak comes to an end. Ball State now 10 and 14 overall, four and eight in the Mid-American Conference. Eastern Michigan with its first road win of the season, now 12 and 13 overall, five and six in the Mid-American Conference. Glenn Bryant leads the way for Eastern Michigan with 18 for the Ball State Cardinals. Jawan Scaife was the top scorer, but it wasn't enough. Cardinals lose 56-50 to Eastern Michigan.